behavior means an act which an organism does it is a trait of any living entity the study of behavior is called behavioral biology or more precisely called ethology a separate branch of biology it is very interesting to study and know this because behavioral biology is very close to psychology where human behavior in particular is considered it has wide applications in forensic medicine and health ever since the evolution of man he has been a keen observer and then an analyzer this behavior of his has led to separate study of biology called ethology the basic approaches to study of behavior are at ecological that is interaction of an organism with its environment and then ethological that is whether innate stereotyped or genetic chiefly predominant in lower organisms of course a basic in higher forms too and secondly learned as is the case with higher forms of life introduction darwin's and his predecessors natural history approach gradually evolved into the twin sciences of animal ecology the study of interaction between an animal and its environment and ethology the behavioral biology ethology dates back to the late 19th and early 20th centuries when scientists from various countries began exploring the behaviors of selected vertebrate species example dogs by the russian physiologist ivan pavlov rodents by american psychologists john b watson edward tolman and carl leslie birds by american psychologist b f skinner primates by german american psychologist wolfgang koller american psychologist robert yerkes etc these studies were carried out in the laboratories in the case of dogs rodents and pigeons or in artificial colonies and laboratories in the case of primate these studies were oriented towards psychological and physiological questions rather than ecological or evolutionary ones however it was not until the 1930s that field naturalists such as english biologist julian huxley austrian zoologist conard lorenz and dutch born british zoologist and ethologist nicola stinbergen studying birds australian zoologist carl von frisch and american entomologist william morton wheeler examining insects gained prominence and returned to broad biological studies of animal behavior these individuals the founders of ethology had direct experience with the richness of behavioral repertory of animals living in their natural surroundings their return to nature approach was a large extent a reaction against the tendency prevalent among psychologists to study just a few behavioral phenomena observed in a handful of species that were kept in impoverished laboratory environments approaches to study behavior the chief aim of the psychologists was to formulate behavioral hypotheses that led to have general applications example about learning as a single all purpose phenomenon later on this could be used as a deductive approach by testing the hypothesis through experimentation on captive animals in contrast the ethologists advocated an inductive approach one that begins with observing and describing what animals do and then proceeds to address a general question why do these animals behave as they do by this they meant how do specific behaviors of these animals led to differential reproduction since its birth in the 1930s the ethological approach which stresses the direct observation of a broad array of animal species in nature embraces the vast variety of behaviors found in the animal kingdom and commits to investigate behavior from a broad biological perspective which has proved to be highly effective
One of Dinbergen's most important contribution to the study of animal behavior was to emphasize that ecology is like any other branch of biology where a comprehensive study of any behavior must address four categories of questions today which are called levels of analysis namely number one causation number two ontogeny number three function and number four evolutionary history although each of these four approaches require a different kind of scientific investigation all contribute to the solving the enduring puzzle of how and why animals including human beings behave as they do a familiar example of animals behavior is a dog wagging its tail which serves to illustrate the levels of analysis framework for example when a dog senses the approach of a companion be it a dog or human it stands still fixates on the approaching individual raises its tail and begins swishing it from side to side the question is why does the dog wag its tail to answer the general question four specific questions must be addressed number 1 with respect to causation the question becomes what makes the behavior happen to answer this question it becomes important to identify the physiological and cognitive mechanism that underlie the tail wagging behavior for example the way the dog's hormonal system adjusts its responsiveness to stimuli how the dog's nervous system transmits signal from its brain to its tail and how the dog's skeletal muscular system generates tail wagging movements need to be understood causation can also be addressed from the perspective of cognitive process that is knowing how the dog processes information when greeting a companion with tail wagging this perspective includes determining how the dog senses the approach of another individual how it recognizes the individual as a friend and how it decides to wag its tail the dog's possible interactions for example receiving a pat on the head feelings and awareness of self become the focus of the investigation number 2 with respect to ontogeny the question becomes how does the dog's tail wagging behavior develop the focus here is on investigating the underlying developmental mechanism that lead to the occurrence of the behavior the answer derives from the understanding how the sensory motor mechanism producing the behavior are shaped as the dog matures from a puppy into a functional adult animal both internal and external factors can shape the behavioral machinery so understanding the development of the dog's tail wagging behavior requires investigating the influence of the dog's genes and its experiences number 3 with respect to function how does the dog's tail wagging behavior contribute to genetic success the focus of this question is rooted in the subfield called behavioral ecology the answer requires investigating the effects of tail wagging on the dog's survival and reproduction that is determining how the tail wagging behavior helps the dog survive to adulthood mate and rear young in order to perpetuate its genes number 4 that is lastly with respect to evolutionary history the question becomes how did tail wagging behavior evolve from its ancestral form to its present form to address this question scientists must hypothesize evolutionary antecedent behaviors in ancestral species and attempt to reconstruct the sequence of events over evolutionary time that led from the origin of the trait to the one observed today for example an antecedent behavior to tail wagging by dogs might be the tail raising and tail vibrating behaviors in ancestral wolves perhaps when a prey animal was sighted such behaviors were used to signal other pack members that a chase was about to begin 
both the biological and the physical sciences seek explanation of natural phenomenon in physiochemical terms. The biological sciences, which include the study of behavior, however, have an extra dimension relative to the physical sciences. In biology, physiochemical explanations are addressed by Tinbergen's question on causation and ontogeny, which taken together are known as proximate causes. The extra dimension of biology seeks explanations of biological phenomenon in terms of function and evolutionary history, which together are known as ultimate causes. In biology, it, it is legitimate to ask questions concerning the use of this life process today, that is its function and how it came to be over geologic time, that is its evolutionary history. More specifically, the word use and came to be are applied on special ways, namely promoting genetic success and evolved by means of natural selection. In physics and chemistry, these type of questions are out of bounds. For example, questions concerning the use of the movements of a dog's tail are reasonable, whereas questions regarding the use of the movements of an ocean tides are more metaphysical. And to summarize at the end, a comprehensive study of any behavior must address four categories of questions, which today are called level of levels of analysis, namely causation, ontogeny, function and evolutionary history. Causation is about what makes the behavior happen, may be physiological or environmental stimuli. Ontogeny explains the development of behavior, that is whether it is innate or genetic or environmental that is learned. Function of behavior is all about the doing of the animal, that is its activity with the selective advantage, whereas evolutionary history explains how and from where behavior evolve from its ancestral form to its present form, maybe for some other cause in the ancestors and for a new in the present form. Causation and ontogeny are proximate causes, whereas function and evolutionary history are the ultimate causes.